Today we have this interesting looking differential equation. And this structure here is an example of a class of differential equations called functional differential equations. In this case, we have the derivative of some function f with respect to x being equal to the composition of f on itself, or f of f of x. Okay, so how exactly do we approach a solution for this structure? Well, since this is a brand new case, let's treat it the same way we would any differential equation on the first day of our differential equations class. Re recall that we tried fitting solutions to differential equations. So let's try fitting a polynomial solution here. So I'm going to assume the solution is y of the form of alpha times x to the beta, where alpha and beta could be complex numbers. Okay, so I need the derivative of y with respect to x. So on differentiation, I have y prime being equal to this constant multiple of alpha times beta because of the power rule, and I have x to the beta minus 1. So that's one piece of the puzzle. I have the derivative, but now I need the composition. So what is f of f of x? Well, that means I have to replace the x with the structure of f itself, and that is alpha times x to the beta. So that would give me alpha times the replaced x term, that's the function itself. Okay, so that means I have alpha times alpha to the beta times x to the beta squared. Or simplifying this, I have alpha to the beta plus 1 times x to the beta squared, that is the composition f of f of x. Now, according to my differential equation, the derivative and this composition need to be equal. So let me just equate them here. So I'm writing here that alpha times beta times x to the beta minus 1 equals alpha to the beta plus 1 times x to the beta squared. So I could get rid of one of the alpha terms, and that simplifies my work quite a bit. I have beta times x to the beta minus 1 being equal to alpha to the beta times x to the beta squared. What we can do with this equation is extract the values or possible values of alpha and beta. And we can do that by comparing the exponents and the coefficients of the x terms on both sides. So on comparing the exponents, I have beta minus 1 equal to beta squared. And for the coefficients, I have beta equal to alpha to the beta. So what I get from this system of equations is that if I determine the possible values of beta, then the possible values of alpha are automatically determined because of the relation between them in the second equation. Okay, so let's just solve the equation for beta. We have beta squared minus beta plus 1 equal to 0. And this is the perfect chance for the quadratic formula to shine. Remember all those memes about never using the quadratic formula in real life? Well, we've proved all of them wrong. We have this interesting functional differential equation that we've never seen before, and to solve it, we need the quadratic formula. If that's not a real-life application, I don't know what is. Anyway, so applying the quadratic formula, we have beta equal to plus 1 plus or minus square root 1 minus 4 divided by 2. So that means we have 1 plus or minus i times root 3 divided by 2. Okay, cool. So these are two possible values for the beta parameter, and it would be nice if I can express these in polar forms because, well, they look cooler. So the real part is supposed to be the cosine of something, Wait, I need the modulus first. So the modulus of beta is 1 half squared. That's a quarter plus 3 quarters, all in the square root, which is 1. So that's out of the way. That means 1 half is supposed to be the cosine of something. And that's the cosine of pi by 3. So this implies that beta would be e to the plus or minus i pi by 3, correct? So that's the beta parameter. And what about alpha? So we recall from our equation that beta is supposed to be equal to 
alpha to the beta, and this implies that alpha equals beta to the one by beta. So that means we have determined that alpha equals e to the plus or minus i pi by three to the reciprocal of e to the plus or minus i pi by three. And of course, reciprocating reverses the signs. So we have e to the minus or plus i pi by three, depending on the beta parameter we pick for the solution. Okay, cool. So we have two possible solutions, depending on what value of the beta parameter we pick. One would be f of x being equal to, so we had alpha, and alpha is just beta to the one by beta times x to the beta. So picking e to the positive i pi by three, we have e to the i pi by three to the e to the negative i pi by three, which looks extremely cool by the way, times x to the e i pi by three, and another possible solution is f of x equal to e to the negative i pi by three to the e to the positive i pi by three, again, this is looking extremely cool, times x to the e to the negative i pi by three. So these are two possible solutions to our functional differential equation. And I think they look pretty dope. And the solution development was pretty cool. Let me know in the comments if you have anything to add here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.